be. This meeting is being recorded. All right, so my name is Kirk Kermitsky. I'm working on a company called Quick Labs that is based on open source software for design, engineering, and manufacturing. And sort of one of the selling points of open source software is that it has a lot of power and it just requires a little bit of expertise on top of that to, to get things going. And an example of that is uh, this ability to use uh, sort of this chat GPT style uh, tooling, but use it on your own machine. And uh, for example, not need to send off, you know, your sensitive queries to some third party. And especially if you have, you know, data that you're using, um, that you're trying to uh, sort of maybe prompt with, you know, some sensitive information, you don't have to kind of give a copy of that to someone else. And so the the tricky part about today's workshop is just that there's a lot of downloading that is going to need to be done. And so, for example, um, the the tool itself uses something called a, a model weight, which is sort of like a very, very large file. Uh, and so that all of them combined, uh, the copy that I have on sort of my home computer is almost 400 gigabytes. And so, you know, getting all of those is definitely out of the question in an hour and even getting one of them maybe depending upon your your Internet speed. And so what I'm going to do essentially is try to get people started on downloading the prerequisites. And as that's going, I'm just going to do a quick demo. And then once that's that's done, I can just kind of uh, answer questions one by one. And, and if people have issues or are stuck on something, I can just kind of see what is required. And so in terms of the prerequisites, just a, a quick outline, uh, you need to have Python on your computer. And so uh, for people who use Mac OS, uh, they already should have a copy of Python. Uh, but you may not want to actually use sort of the system version rather than getting a copy of it yourself. Uh, and then there's also a tool called Git, which is used to download uh, source code and also to sort of work on it, um, handling revisions and things like that. And so with Git, you actually can get the tool itself, but then also there's a, a way of using it to download the data that we use for the, uh, for the tool as well. And so uh, I would just say, if you don't know that you already have Python and Git on your computer, go to the two uh, URLs at the top there, python.org and git-scm.org. And it should be fairly self-explanatory on the site as far as how to download them. Uh, and then once they are downloaded, um, the next steps are going to be to actually get the, the data itself, the, the weights, as they call it. And so for that, the smallest one is a 3 billion parameter model. model and it's, uh, let me just double check real quick here, the size of that. Yeah, so that's 13 gigabytes. And so downloading that, you know, it may take a while. Uh, and so with today, you know, the goal is that because it may not be something that you can get across the finish line before the end of the lunch, uh, I'm going to try to share everyone, uh, share with everyone these slides and, and also just be open to questions if people are interested in kind of completing it uh, later on. And uh, I also will have copies, I, you know, if anyone is uh, interested in coming in person just to get it directly, I can do the old fashioned sneaker net and just give you a copy on a USB. Uh, and one other thing is that once the prerequisites are downloaded, uh, sort of another piece of background information that's kind of assumed is that we're going to be working in the terminal. And so depending upon what, uh, you know, if you're using Windows or Mac OS or Linux like I am, uh, you may need to open up uh, what's called like the, the command prompt. Um, and so, uh, like I mentioned, once we have the prerequisites, the next step is to download the data. And then we actually have to build llama.cpp. Um, and then once the, sort of the build has been done, we have a couple tools besides the sort of the main chatbot experience. Uh, and so one of those is uh, something called quantization, where we take the original data and kind of uh, massage it a little bit to make it a little bit more performant and a little bit smaller. Um, but sort of now that the prerequisites are covered, uh, the next step is just to uh, give a quick demo just so people can kind of see what the experience is like. And I can also just kind of run through the process as well directly. Um, but the, the only thing with that is I'm going to be working in the terminal. And so, uh, you know, that's sort of a, a leap for any of you. Uh, just, you know, pipe up if you have questions. And also, so uh, these these links, the build and prepare data and run, those are just particular segments in the the repository. And so this URL, github.com slash ggerganov slash llama.cpp, if you go to that in the browser, uh, you can see sort of these are just segments on that page. And so one other thing I uh, mentioned is in terms of getting the weights, uh, 
one of the fastest ways to do it is, is through torrenting. And for a lot of people that may kind of raise questions of, you know, legality, because some people do use it for nefarious purposes, but it is also totally, totally normal and legal. Uh, it's used by, you know, companies like Steam, for example, or for uh, companies like Valve, which is a big gaming company. And the whole idea is that they can kind of distribute the downloads among many people. And so this is uh, I included in this slide, just a way of getting that directly. Let me change what I'm sharing here. Okay, and so here I have a, a terminal window that I am gonna just go ahead and quickly run through the sort of chatbot experience. Actually, I already have it open here. Uh, and so let me cancel out real quick. Um, there was sort of a way of using it interactively uh, where you can go and you know ask questions as you would expect for chat GPT, but you also can kind of give it a prompt and, and just kind of let it, let it go off. And so I have one in my command history here and uh, just to give an example, I'm running the command and then I'm using uh, the 30 billion parameter model, which is one of the ones that's probably too big to download today. Uh, and then the prompt uh, right after that is a Midwest tech startup should focus on. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. And so you can kind of see what the process actually looks like. So there's a whole bunch of diagnostic information at the top there. And then as you can see, it's kind of just pumping text out at a fairly steady, steady pace based on the original seed. And so the interesting thing is that the quality varies depending upon you know the, the size of the model, the 30 billion parameter, like the one we're using here, or you know other other smaller sizes, bigger sizes, and so forth. So there's trade-offs there. And you know, because of that, sort of the, the text you're actually getting can be of varying quality as well. And so I don't know if I would necessarily follow all this. Earlier I was saying that you should uh, start, you should buy uh, hire salespeople immediately. And so it's kind of uh, just something that uh, it's based on sort of what it's trained on, sort of what people have said on the internet, something like that. And so this is sort of the, the prompting amount. You can kind of specify a, a, a size for what it actually outputs, but you can also uh, use sort of the chat experience and so with this, we sort of have this uh, prompt text above it where we sort of prime the model and say, you know, the largest city in Europe, we tell it already that it's in Moscow and then uh, we, you know, say what time it is. And so does anyone have any sort of uh, questions that they would like to shout out or anything like that that I can ask it besides just kind of going ahead with what I might? So for example, uh, what is the capital of Portugal? This one, because it's you know factual and it should have just been kind of stated so many times uh, in the training data that there really shouldn't be any problem with it. Yeah, and so it knows it's Lisbon. Um, but for example, if I were to ask something a little stranger, like, are you alive? Uh, or even, you know, what time is it? You know, it'll say, or how many years? Okay, how many years? This sort of question can, sort of confuse a little bit more and uh, okay. Yeah, and see, this is an example of what I'm talking about where, you know, it's a, it's a reasonable seeming answer. Or it's it's a, an answer shaped text, but it's not necessarily, you know, what you're, what you're asking for. Okay, and so this is just sort of the capabilities of it. Um, you can, um, the behavior of it. So right now you sort of had this question and answer user and chat llama that we uh, seeded it with before, you can, you know, customize that that prompt and get sort of different behavior for it. Okay, and so uh, just now that that quick demo is done, I can kind of go through the process from the top as far as what is required to get this running. Um, but does anyone have any questions or anything like that that they wanted to jump in first? I had a quick question. Um, and mm -hmm. since it's just operate, operating uh, files you download on your computer, like what are the limitations of, you know, Llama on your laptop as opposed to, you know, using chat GTP on the web? Like mm -hmm. just an idea well, of that. Yeah, so it, it's, it's kind of a tricky question. One of the things, that, you know, on that topic, I would just say is that, uh, you know, if you kind of ask around or, or try to get a, a finger on public sentiment, one thing people are kind of complaining about is that they feel like the quality has gone down. And, you know, with that, I feel like that they may sort of, this is speculation, but I feel like they may have, you know, been subsidizing the, the, 
the compute cost to get better quality at the beginning, sort of like a pump, if you will. Uh, and so now that you know the the initial wave of excitement is, is faded off, they can say we can maybe turn the quality down and save a little bit more money. And so the whole idea is, you know, how long will it take to come up with an answer, and you know how. Uh, also, you sort of have specific limitations. So, for example, the memory of, of the laptop. And so, I uh, earlier was using the 30 billion parameter model um, when I did sort of the, the the prompt of a Midwest tech startup should focus on. And so, with that one, you know, if you have a laptop of a certain size, it just can't fit the model in the memory. And there's a, a chart or a table on the uh, llama.cpp github repository that talks about this a little bit more and um, that's one of the things I when I also mentioned you know you build it and then one of the tools that you build is something to do quantization where they sort of change the the resolution of the data so that it can fit into less memory and so uh, let's see so for example the biggest model that they have is a 65 billion parameter model the file size is 120 gigabytes and when it's quantized it's 38 and a half gigabytes and so in other words if you use the original model you need to have at least 120 gigabytes of memory on your computer and so the the demo that i'm using right now is on my home computer it has 100 and 128 gigabytes i think Let me double check yeah, so it's it's a very large machine, and it you know can fit all of them. But uh, the laptop that I'm doing the presentation on right now, it only has 16 gigabytes, and so I can't use those larger models and the quality that comes with them. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of run through the the process. Um, so first of all, I should just mention that on this machine, I've already got Git. So I can just type which, which Git and which Python, and you can see that I've already got, got them installed. And so sort of an assumption that once you have those installed and, and the, the console um, opened up, that's sort of the, the point at which you can jump in with what I'm going to do. And so I also should, of course, mention that I have the, uh, the, the models downloaded. And so in this directory here, in the llama.cpp directory, I have this models directory. You can see the different ones. So like I mentioned, that all of them combined, it's 395 gigabytes of storage. Uh, and so kind of running from the top here, I've got the data, I've got the um, the tools repository itself, and I'm just going to replicate the build process. And so um, let's see. Depending upon the platform that people are on, there's kind of some assumptions as far as what's available already. Um, and so if you're on Linux uh, or Mac OS, um, there's a tool called Make that you already have, uh, but if you're on Windows on the GitHub repository, there's a, a link that says sort of the things you have to download in, in advance to get this working. But sort of assuming that you know the Make uh, sort of the building tools are available on the, the platform already, um, I'm just going to run through the build steps. And so. Uh, CMake is another sort of dependency. Once you have Python installed, um, you can use Python to install CMake as well. And so this is build steps, those two commands of CMake and make. And this is documented also on the GitHub repository in the build section. OK. So now in this repository, uh, you see there's a couple of these files that have green uh, coloring. And so those are actually the executables. And specifically, the quantize one is the one we want. So just for example, I'm going to look at the 7 billion parameter directory. Um, we have this file ggml model f16. And that's sort of the raw data. And so what I've already done here, but I'll just uh, do once more, is to run the quantize tool. And so this is a this command that I also just pasted from the repository. Oh, uh, Harry, do you have a question? Oh, yeah, I see and, it in the chat. Uh, it's it's in the chat, but uh, I don't think anybody saw it. Yeah. More fundamentally, why would we want this on a laptop when you still need a connection to the net when you can use Bard or ChatGPT from a browser? Well, you don't. So you only need uh, the connection initially to do the initial setup. But once you've got it, you can do things off. Line, and you can also build uh, sort of tooling in your own infrastructure that doesn't depend on the, the internet and you don't have to pay uh, so you know it's a matter of paying 
the the API cost to them as you use it versus having hardware that you've already paid for. And so the ah. economics of it, um, sort of the upper bound of what you can pay when you're sort of directly hooked up to the API is a little higher. Uh, actually, it's kind of not really bounded. Uh, and so on the local side, if you, you know, kind of do some sort of overrun, all that will happen is your computer will be, you know, heating Meltdown. up. Because, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, it's limited essentially by, you know, your electricity bill and things like that. Yeah, got it. But okay. the other uh, big thing is is sort of the data security. And so, for example, um, the, the chatbot script that this uses that has sort of a prompt of, you know, uh, what is the capital of, or what is the biggest city in Europe? And, you know, it kind of gives this sort of uh, back and forth that seeds the behavior. But if, for example, you wanted to train it on some proprietary data, um, then, you know, you, you don't necessarily want to send that off to a company that is going to be right. keeping a copy of it especially depending okay. upon the you know so with companies that are focusing just on this they may not sort of have any competition but like let's say apple for example if you have some app uh, they're kind of known for you know stealing app ideas and so no not apple <laughs> yeah right um okay yeah, thanks so, no i was yeah. just i was just saying man that's a you know you know laptop with a even with a terabyte on there mm -hmm. you're talking you're chewing, you're chewing up a third or more of your hard drive space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that and that's also only if you have every single that has every every different um, size model and also the quantized version on top of it. Ah, okay. And so this is the quantization process that I mentioned. And I just ran this earlier on the laptop I'm presenting on, and it was a lot slower. Luckily, this uh, machine I have at home is is pretty beefy. And so um, just looking back at the prepare data and run section of the repository, I did actually skip one step that I'm going to go back to. All right, and so that's that. The other thing is that uh, sort of jumping back to the step of having Python and the model weights available, um, there's the step of actually installing dependencies. And so this is the command right here, and I can just rerun that. Yeah, and so since I've already installed them, it won't do anything. But if you were to run this, you would sort of have some lines as it downloads and installs everything. And then there's um, also a conversion process uh, before you do the quantization. So this is the command for that. And so. Uh, sort of on your end, once you have uh, the prerequisites installed and you've run through these commands for the, the build, the, the Python dependencies, the conversion, and then the quantization, uh, you can sort of do things uh, directly where, you know, you sort of prompt it with a particular phrase, or you can do sort of the demo chat application. And so I'm going to just show that application here in just a moment. Okay, and so they have this examples directory here. So the script itself is chat. So this just shows you this is the actual command that it runs, and then it has this prompt, prompts chat with Bob. And so just like I mentioned, sort of the the tenor of the the interactive interactive experience is is based on this this prompt you have, and so the the phrasing is kind of interesting. Transcript of a dialogue where the user interacts with an assistant is helpful, kind, honest, good at writing, and so forth. And so if I were to go in there and say bad at writing, uh, actually maybe we'll go and do that right now. Let's make it terrible.
Right, and so let's see, write a soliloquy. Okay. Oh, well, he just went ahead and gave up. <laughs> so um, yeah, does anyone have any sort of other humorous prompts they would like to suggest? Apparently you're okay. the funniest person here, Kurt. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I don't know how much an, uh, an impact the terrible writing change actually had, but at the very least, uh, it seems like it did a little. So. So the, the whole idea is that you know once you've kind of got these these steps done and you you know validated everything's working with the example scripts, uh, you can go in there and, and customize things and build applications on top of it. And so, um, for example, you know there's there's a software project that I work on. Um, I can go in and sort of just feed it some snippet of the the documentation. And so it's uh, sort of the the built-in capabilities of you know what already works, and then you kind of augment it with something else. Okay. And so yeah, I'm not sure what else uh, in terms of demoing might be worth showing, but this is sort of the, the gist of it. Um, is there anyone who's sort of made attempts at, at sort of downloading the prerequisites and gotten stuck on anything or? Um, I don't have enough space on my surface, so no. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, one of the things I was thinking I don't have was, enough oomph. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking it might be interesting to try to, um, you know, have a, you know, have the sort of machine that's already set up with everything that I can access myself. And I don't know, it may be possible to kind of allow control of my screen if someone wants to try to kind of do it themselves. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, sorry if you had already kind of gone over this, but um, I mean, what uh, types of businesses would this make the most <clears throat> sense for? So the way that people are trying to use it now has to do a lot with customer service. So if someone goes to your website and they, you know, have something that they're, they're trying to find, if you, you know, sort of train the the bot on the the site map or you know the the actual text copy of your website, then they can potentially give helpful answers. Uh, the the concern that I have with that though is that, you know, there's edge cases and, and the behavior of the system itself is not super predictable, you know, not really deterministic and exposing it to customers, you may have something happen you don't really want to happen, especially if it's, you know, something that people can mess around with. So a, a good example of this is Microsoft released a tool called Tay and people went in and started messing with it in a way that it started basically, uh, you know, spouting racism and things like that. And so I would say that it's probably more effective if you use it internally. And so if you can have some sort of something like that, but trained on the, um, let's say internal documentation and things like that. But I think right now it's still in a very experimental phase. And so it may also just be good to, you know, try things out, see what, see what works quickly, what, you know, doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And since it's also um, just secure, you know, mm -hmm. it's not connected to the internet, which you've got it up and running. I mean, it seems like it might be a good application for, you know, like somebody that's writing insurance policies and other, you know, creating language that, you know, with personally identifiable information right. and other sensitive data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, if you needed to, you know, or if you wanted to use it to, let's say, give you the skeleton of like a condolence email or something like that, that's a little sensitive, especially if you include someone's name, uh, you know, that's something that you could do. And so actually, I guess maybe that would be, um, that'd be an interesting prompt. Yeah, let's try it. So I'll use, uh, let's see.
Can we have um, a read an insensitive condolence? No, we, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so uh, I'm not sure. So with this, this only having this little text snippet of a prompt it may not be sufficient to get quite the behavior we want. And so you know, the example of the chat bot earlier, you know, there's sort of the the, the priming where you know it's a helpful, uh, good at writing and so forth. And so the thing with this is, you know, on your phone, for example, if you go in and you press the auto suggested, uh, the first thing that comes up on auto suggest and you keep pressing that over and over, it's kind of like that, the, the behavior of this. Mm -hmm. And so because I use this sort of imperative tone, it may be, it may be, maybe it'll pick up and say it's going to continue giving instructions rather than responding to the instructions. That's what it looks like. And so we yeah, are a little off the rails already. Yeah. And this is sort of like a list of things, a list of instructions. Yeah. We're still smarter than the chatbot. Right. Yeah. Or at least more nuanced. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's that's one of the issues is that uh, you know behind the scenes, it's not super clear why things work the way they do. It's, it's not transparent, you know, in the same way that like, let's say a, a physics formula would be. And so it requires sort of, you know, massaging and finesse and, and things like that mm -hmm. to get the, the behavior that you want. And even then, that's not to say that that, uh, you know, there's not really a, a clear boundary around that behavior to where it couldn't start misbehaving, you know. So for example, uh, one point I was testing this and asking, you know, like how long has it been since a certain time? And it, you know, started kind of getting argumentative and say, oh, oh, I don't want to talk about it. And so, you know, imagine if you have something customer facing, you know, they're like, oh, I need help with this. Uh, but they phrase it in such a way that, you know, it kind of gets on uh, the rails. Like that can be an issue. The chatbot gets a little sensitive. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, or like let's, let's agree to disagree. You know, it's not something I would really want to hear. Can we try to um, command it to just write an event description for a llama on your yeah, laptop? Yeah, sure. Uh, so probably just picking up with the chat example. Uh, let's see, write an event description. Yeah, and I, I, when I was um, demoing things here, kind of making sure everything worked, that was one of the things I did. But the description, it's very verbose in a way that a person probably would try to not be. Mm -hmm. Write an event description for. Well, what I like about a chat GP, chat GTP is that it generates language that you can right. then, you know, just trim <laughs> or elaborate on to your liking. Mm -hmm. That's what I think is why it's such a cool tool. Yeah, and so you know this detail that it comes right out of the gate with is, Just... <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, okay. In the We're past, in San Diego. Uh, okay. Not and so, bad. Oops, with this, you know, maybe being a little more choosy. So, write a two-paragraph event description for a, an AI workshop at Innovate Springfield. Okay, we're gonna do it. Oh, okay, it's in the future this time. We're good. Oh, it's at Springfield Public Library instead. Okay. Oh, this is an interesting detail actually, scikit-learn. So that is actually a real Python framework that's used in this area. And you know, it also did mention Python, interestingly, even though I didn't include that as a detail. Yeah. And that's I'm just, you know, because that's the, where the actual tools are, so or that ecosystem right. the tools are in. I'm glad we have you to back check. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also, I do note the the length was not really heated. I don't see two paragraphs here. Um, yeah, and so I guess one of the other things is kind of tweaking the prompts. Mm -hmm. And so let's see. Yeah, this is just sort of a template that you can use to get the behavior that you want. Oh, that's good. That's cool.
Yeah, so I think I kind of have covered most of what I can do on my end. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions that they were working on trying to do it on their end. Yeah, if anyone has any questions for uh, Kurt, um, let them rip and otherwise we'll uh, wrap it up. Mm -hmm. Get this posted to YouTube. Thanks so much yeah, I guess for the uh, only other thing I would say, let me switch back to my final slide here that's got my contact information. Yeah, so basically just got my, my phone and email here if anyone is interested in trying to, to run this later on. And then just in general, um, you know, although I'm focused on sort of the CAD engineering uh, manufacturing ecosystem, the whole appeal of open source software is its power in solving business problems in general. And so I'm interested just in kind of chatting and seeing ways in which that could be applied with anyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kurt. Have Thanks. a great day, everybody. Yeah,